Just as Jesus died and has risen again, so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. And as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be brought to life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You played for us at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed service also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job said, Ah, uh, would that these words of mine were written down inscribed on some monument with iron chisel and engraving tool cut into the rock forever. This I know, that my avenger lives and he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awaking, he will set me close to him and from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? The Lord is my light and my life. There is one thing I ask of the Lord. For this I long. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To savor the sweetness of the Lord. To behold his temple. O oh Lord. Hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. The Lord is my light. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him. Hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. If it is certain that death reigned over everyone as the consequence of one man's fall, it is even more certain that one man, Jesus Christ, will cause everyone to reign in life who receives the free gift that he does not deserve of being made righteous. Again, as one man's fall brought condemnation on everyone, so the good act of one man brings everyone life and makes them justified. As by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. When law came, it was to multiply, multiply the opportunities of falling but however great the number of sins committed, grace was even greater. And so just as sin reigned wherever there was death, 
So grace will reign to bring eternal life. Thanks to the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the Savior we are waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did not take their lamps, but they did take their lamps, but they brought no oil. Whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here. Go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But they replied, there may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom's, or bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. I'll take one second to introduce myself before I, I share a few words about the, um, our day today. My name is Father Greg Hammond. I'm a priest in the Diocese of Fargo in North Dakota in the United States. North Dakota is one of our northernmost states, right in the very center of the country, touching the, the northern border of Canada. I'm here with um, seven other people, four priests up here with me, the deacon who just proclaimed the gospel, his wife, and, and another couple there in the right over there <laughs> in the front of the, the pews. So it's my first time here to Fatima. We arrived yesterday and it's um, been blessed, of course, so far. Our faith is um, uh, a faith that to many people on the outside who are not of, of the fold, who are not people of faith themselves, it's a faith that can seem uh, so, so puzzling. If it's not distasteful to many, it may be puzzling to them nonetheless. Because of our, um, our, our belief, our recognition, that with, um, within the circumstances that, that life brings to us, within, within any circumstance that life brings to us, God is still in control. And he likes to show his control the most when everything looks like it is falling apart. We celebrate this day of all saints, or all souls, excuse me, the day that all of our beloved we remember all of our beloved who have passed on. But it's a day that we also remember the, the, that pain that's associated with their passing, the pain that it brought maybe to them, the pain that it brought to our own hearts, the sadness that we felt at that time. We can't divorce that or separate or forget that, that sadness that came along with that. 
That's what's puzzling about our faith to many. And it's what St. Paul called the, the, the contradiction of the cross. The contradiction of the cross that looks like folly to so many. It's one of those places where we're really asked to make acts of faith. That when difficulty comes to me, most especially the difficulty of death, whether it's my own or the death of somebody that I love, we make that act of faith that this is within God's hands. This is within his, his providential care. The suffering that goes along with this death, all, all of the difficulties that it's bringing to us right now, this has God's, or God has his hand in it. Is it what I want? No, probably not. None of us want death for ourselves or for anybody else. But we do know that it's coming. And we also know that the Lord himself passed into that. And so even in death, there's a, there's a, there's a source of blessing. There's a gift that can only be found in death. There's a story of uh, St. Edith Stein, uh, Blessed uh, Teresa Benedict of the Cross, who uh, was a, a Jewish woman living in Germany uh, before the Second World War. She died in Auschwitz during the Second World War. She was a, uh, an avowed atheist, grew up in a secular Jewish family, but by her own adulthood was an avowed atheist. But there came a point in her life when she was meeting with a friend of hers, a close friend who was a woman of faith, but recently lost her husband. It was in seeing the, the, the strength that this woman's faith continued to give her, even as her life fell apart in one sense. There was a solidity to her soul. There was a strength that continued to well up inside. Seeing the cross that hung from her friend's neck started to work in the heart of Edith. It started to plant that question of whether or not there is more to this faith that to her had looked only so foolish, only so simple-minded. Maybe there was more to it. And it began what, was a, what, what became a, a, a tremendous conversion a conversion that brought her, herself into, eventually, the concentration camps. And with her came light. With the faith that grew inside of her heart, that led her eventually to become a Carmelite, but eventually, because of her Jewish blood, brought her into the darkness of Auschwitz. It also brought light there. Light in that place of so much despair. That's where Christ wanted to be found. He wanted to be found in the midst of even Auschwitz. And it was through her and through countless others we trust. Many unnamed, but through countless others holding on to their faith in the midst of the greatest of, of atrocities, the greatest of difficulties that are beyond our ability to imagine. Nonetheless, his power was still found. Can we exercise that kind of faith for the rest of the day, maybe for tomorrow? Can we remember whenever something goes differently than what I would have wanted? Whenever I have to accept something differently than, than I hoped for, than maybe even I prayed for, may God be praised. May God be praised because within this, he has a blessing for me. I don't know what it is, perhaps, and I may never actually see it but there is some blessing here. So no matter the difficulty that I have to say yes to, I thank him for that. And I trust that his, his, his victory is sure and his, his power and his resurrection will be seen. Let us stand and lift up our prayers.
that we all bring to this altar. For all those we have known, all those we never knew, that died, and all those souls who persevered and kept the faith, enriched it in their lives, and gave example, we pray to the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. For all of those suffering this day, going through the trials that God has control of, but we think we have, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For all those in the world who are in pain and suffering, may those other people who are there surrounding them give them comfort and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear for all those this day who have died, and for all those who will die this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord O oh Lord, may our prayers be accompanied always by the prayers of your saints rising up to your throne, that you may hear your people call out to you, and you may bless us according to your desire. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celi et terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in the Chelsea's, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, 
Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Antonio, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and praying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your sins, we ask through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by our protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, the therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing.
remember also lord your servants who have gone before us with your sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace grant them o lord we pray and all who sleep in christ a place of refreshing light and peace To us also, your servants who love sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will, will not die forever.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your departed servants, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. You may respond to these three prayers of amen. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. amen so that we may all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.